major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. by viewers like you. Thank you. Good evening, it's Wednesday, July 14th. Thank you for joining us, I'm Maya Trabulsi. Day after day for the last several weeks, COVID cases in San Diego County have been on the rise. This comes as public health officials say vaccine hesitancy is becoming a concern. KPBS reporter Alexander Rangel has more on how the county plans to spend millions on response to the virus. On Tuesday, the County Board of Supervisors accepted a $24 million grant that will be used to address COVID-19 disparities among underserved populations. This comes as cases are on the rise. The county is now seeing double the cases than a month ago, and hospitalizations have increased by 46 percent. In a press conference Wednesday, Governor Newsom pleaded for residents to get vaccinated. Well, particularly those who haven't been vaccinated. Those that are in the hospitals, those that have died, overwhelmingly are people that have not been vaccinated. Vaccine hesitancy continues to be a barrier in fighting the virus. We spoke to David Metz, president of FM3 Research. They conducted the recent county survey about residents' views on the vaccine. About one in five adults tell us that not only are they not vaccinated yet, but a majority of them say they have no intention of getting vaccinated. He says those hesitant are younger folks who don't see COVID as a threat. They also aren't confident in the vaccine. They lack confidence in the safety of the vaccine. They're worried about side effects. They're worried that the vaccine's development was too rushed, and they're uncertain what its long-term impacts might be. Robert Gillespie is the medical director for the Black Nurses Association. He says vaccination efforts need to be focused on those open to getting the vaccine. I think we have to focus on, first of all, the 20 percent of people who are unvaccinated who still feel they're very likely to get vaccinated. Long term conditions and issues that can occur if these people aren't vaccinated. Focus on how this can impact their lives. Although 44 percent of those surveyed say they are very unlikely to get the vaccine, the county continues to make moves to improve messaging and vaccine access in areas with low vaccination rates. Alexandra Rangel, KPBS News. COVID cases are surging in 46 states and health experts are blaming the Delta variant. The CDC says the variant accounted for nearly 58 percent of new cases since July 3rd. The death rate also rose in the last week. More than 99 percent of the deaths in June were unvaccinated people. In the hardest hit areas, the virus spreading among young people is a big concern ahead of the school year. Parents would like to have a situation where, they're, where their children are as protected as they can be, um, but that requires everybody to do their part, uh, wear masks when appropriate, uh, and then get vaccinated. The CDC reports so far about 25% of 12 to 15 year olds are fully vaccinated. For more information about vaccinations and where to get one, visit our website, kpbs.org. We've made it easy to find with a vaccines link right on our homepage. California is helping residents who are behind on their rent and utility bills to pay off 100 percent of what they owe. KPBS reporter Melissa May describes the program and how people can apply. The last 15 months have been very challenging for those who struggle to pay their rent. On June 28th, Governor Gavin Newsom signed AB 832 to help Californians get back on track. We put a program up, which is the largest now in the nation, $5.2 billion to pay 100 percent of your back rent to April of last year and to pay 100 percent of your rent through September 30th of this year if you've been impacted directly by COVID-19. Today, Newsom gave an update of the program's impact. $1.02 billion as of this morning has been requested under this program. 
Uh, we have over 108,000, just shy of 109,000 applications. Jennifer Estrada is benefiting from the program. On the 30th, uh, I went to apply, and it works, and it's real. They paid for my bills. Uh, they paid two months' rent I was behind, plus they're paying till September. Um, people don't believe it, but it does work. It is true. Along with rent relief, there is also a program to help pay utility bills, including Internet. An additional $2 billion that provides support to pay off your utilities. Here in San Diego County, four community-based organizations have partnered with the state to help anyone who is eligible to fill out an application. They are also available by phone and in-home visits. There are computers and tablets available at each location. These are long federal applications that are combined with state and local rules and regulations. We have teams of people now that are helping in that process as well. Relief gets paid directly to landlords. So nobody could be thinking, oh, they're going to just steal money or anything like that. And um, I'm one of the ones that has proved that the Housing Foundation does work. Um, and there is money out there to get help, and we get to sleep better at night. Newsom encourages people to apply before September 30th. After September 30th, the likelihood that we're going to extend an eviction moratorium is very modest. Anyone who is income eligible can apply. The state's goal is to disperse rent relief money 30 days after the completion of the application process. Go to housingiskey.com to fill out the application. Melissa May, KPBS News. Low-income San Diegans are missing out on millions of dollars in cash assistance from the state of California. KPBS Metro reporter Andrew Bowen has more on the results of a study released today. The report from the UC Berkeley-based California Policy Lab analyzed data from CalFresh, the state's food stamps program. Many CalFresh recipients make so little money they're not required to file a tax return. But you need a tax return to receive the California Earned Income Tax Credit, which gives cash assistance to the state's poorest residents. That aid can go a long way toward helping people out of poverty. But of course the concern, at least in the short term, is that programs like the Cali IPT or the Golden State Stimulus or this newly expanded child tax credit, um, you know, the households who are most vulnerable, who have the lowest incomes, are most at risk of not receiving those programs. The report found San Diego County's poorest residents missed out on $5.5 million in unclaimed tax credits in 2017, the most recent year with available data. It recommends California expand free tax filing assistance to ensure everyone who's entitled to the tax credit receives it. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News. And if you have children, you may be eligible for the expanded child tax credit. Coming up on Evening Edition, how you can make sure you don't leave money on the table. The San Diego Police Department says about one in every five guns seized at crime scenes is a ghost gun. That's according to new numbers released at a city council committee meeting today. A ghost gun is a homemade gun that does not have a serial number and is not registered with the state. So far in 2021, 233 have been seized, more than all of last year. State law regulates homemade firearms and the legislature is looking into bills to make those regulations more strict. Some council members want the city to create its own laws on ghost guns. I want our city council to act, especially because the new California regulations won't be in place for another year, not until July of 2022. And I don't want us to wait a year to act locally here. Gun rights advocates say existing laws are restrictive enough and the fact that ghost gun numbers are on the rise anyway proves that more laws won't solve the problem. I'm Judy Woodruff tonight on the News Hour. The road ahead for critical infrastructure legislation as it moves closer to votes in Congress. Coming up at 7 after Evening Edition on KPBS. Evacuations are set to begin for Afghan workers who helped the U.S. military effort in a nearly 20-year war. The Biden administration has set up flights as part of Operation Allies Refuge. Those military helpers will be available for special immigrant visa applications, part of the process of applying for U.S. residency. President Biden had faced political pressure from lawmakers on both sides to bring the Afghan workers here 
ahead of next month's U.S. military withdrawal. For many in the public, Afghanistan was America's backburner war far away, often overshadowed by war in Iraq. KPBS military reporter Steve Walsh tells us how a San Diego couple is still coping with the loss of their son in a helicopter crash 15 years ago. Ethan O'Donohoe was 24 years old when he enlisted in the Army. He had already graduated college. His parents, Pat and Pam, still have his pickup truck out front. They drove it home to San Diego after visiting him at Fort Drum just before he deployed to Afghanistan in 2006. And we took him out to dinner at his favorite Chinese restaurant, which he loved, and that was the last time we saw him live. It's been 15 years since Justin died in a fiery helicopter crash on a mountainside in Kunar province, along with nine other soldiers. Fathers aren't supposed to bury children. There is no closure for that. There is a, a internal kernel of you that is still filled with grief. Justin O'Donohoe was a cavalry scout with the 10th Mountain Division. His platoon was on a mountain at night near the Pakistani border. One of Justin's platoon mates, Nick Pelosi, says the landing zone was only large enough for the giant Chinook's rear wheels to touch down. On the third try, the rear rotor struck a treetop. And it just tumbled and exploded and um, it was just mass, mass carnage, basically. They had been in the field for weeks, part of Operation Mountain Lion. The goal was to retake territory captured by Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. It was so hot that we couldn't get down in there, so we're yelling, you know, if, if you're hurt and you're still alive, you know, move or make a sound, something, and we're going to come down and get you. In the morning, the survivors came down to recover the bodies. Pelosi was injured after he was knocked out of the helicopter during an earlier attempt to land. I mean, it was about 9-11, and <laughs> at this point, I, I don't really know. I don't really know what it's about. Pelosi left the Army after that first 18-month deployment. He's now living on a farm in upstate New York, near where he grew up. The damage that comes from this stuff is unbelievable. You know, none of these families are ever going to be the same after this. Justin left one last voicemail before heading into the mountains in Afghanistan just to tell his parents he was okay. They were a military family. Justin's father spent his career in the Navy. His brother Kyle is a Navy pilot. Adonaho's mother Pam says some days are harder than others. I don't, I don't agree with the war because I think a lot of people got killed, a lot of boys got killed for no reason. We didn't win anything for anybody. You know, you, why were we there? I don't know anymore. The O'Donohoe sat around the same dining room table where army officers sat to tell them the findings of the crash nearly 15 years ago. When all is said and done, the helicopter still crashed and our son still died. The army ruled the crash an accident. A heavily redacted copy of the crash report says two sergeants told their leadership that they considered the night landing high risk and didn't understand why it was being attempted. Regardless, the effective end of the war in Afghanistan doesn't offer any solace to the O'Donohos. And you move on with the rest of your, your life and you don't forget, you don't ignore, you don't let it slide by. I have a compartment in me that's just me. America has never had a conflict that stretched on for so long that the parents of fallen soldiers were still watching the war on TV long after their children had died. As the Afghan war finally comes to an end, Pam and Pat O'Donohoe are moving forward without moving on. Steve Walsh, KPBS News. Migrant advocates in San Diego are calling on the U.S. government to end separations of asylum-seeking families at the U.S.-Mexico border. The American Civil Liberties Union of San Diego and Imperial Counties, along with Jewish Family Service, sent a letter to the Department of Homeland Security Secretary. They say they have encountered 19 families between January and May that were separated while detained upon entering the U.S. The organizations recommend halting Title 42 expulsions and adopting a new definition of what constitutes a family unit 
to keep family members together. A state of emergency due to a fire burning south of Yosemite National Park. The river fire is now about 15 square miles and is only 15 percent contained. Madera County officials say four buildings have burned and the hot, dry weather is making for a tough fight. We're going to be looking forward to some cooler days for some of you before things could warm up yet again. Near the coast, things are going to stay nice and comfortable. That's really the winners of the forecast here with the next couple of days. High pressure is going to build in, though, later this weekend. And for some, that could mean a little bit of moisture and cooler temperatures. For others, it'll mean the heat and the dry conditions. Tonight in the metro, temperatures falling off into the upper 60s under some cloudy skies, as we're pretty used to getting during the overnight period. Oceanside dropping off to 65 degrees, Chula Vista 66, El Cajon 65, Brago Springs low 80s there for you for those overnight lows. Thursday into Friday, we'll see that monsoon moisture mainly over the Four Corners region, but as this high pressure begins to develop right about here, it's going to actually try to wrap in a little bit of moisture further and further west as we look ahead to the weekend. Oh, for your highs on Thursday in Ramona getting up to 89 degrees, so closing in right on that 90 degree mark 109 in Borrego Springs out towards San Diego 76 degrees for that daytime high and again mentioned that high is going to be strengthening moving westward and it's going to try to bring in some moisture here for this weekend at least potentially into some of the higher terrain there but it's a question of how far west that moisture is actually going to get near the coast temperature is really not changing a whole lot just a couple degrees here over the next couple of days with highs in the mid to upper 70s further inland temperatures are going to warm up just a little bit here as we start off the next work week closing in on the 90s there by the time we get to your next monday in the mountains temperatures starting off tomorrow in the mid 70s and then we finish off the weekend in the low 70s so again not a whole lot of change here plenty of sunshine here in the forecast for you and in the desert we could actually see just a little bit of a drop off it's a question of whether some moisture begins to work its way into the picture here late in the weekend as temperatures fall back down to about 102 in the desert and then a little bit of a bump as we head into next week again for kpbs news i'm meteorologist jessica pash more than 2 million people have signed up for Affordable Care Act coverage during the special enrollment period. Enrollees now pay no more than 8.5% of their income toward coverage, down from nearly 10%. Also, Medicaid enrollment hit an all-time high of $81 million in February. Families of four with a combined income of a little over $100,000 are also eligible for the first time. The ACA special enrollment period ends on August 15th, but it may be extended. More money in the bank for millions of families. The first payments from the expanded child tax credit are set to arrive this week, and the IRS and other financially minded groups are doing what they can to get the word out to all who are eligible. Karen Kafa breaks down what you need to know. For millions of American families. Those of you who are in that situation are going to start to see that coming in by the end of this month on a monthly basis. Monthly payments of up to $300 per child under age 6 and up to $250 per child under age 17 are on the way. The result of a possibly temporary expansion of the child tax credit, part of the massive COVID relief package signed by President Joe Thank Biden in March. Households that filed a 2020 or 2019 federal income tax return and claim the regular child tax credit will get payments automatically. But families are eligible even if they didn't meet the income threshold to file. If you have a child living in your home for more than half the year, also important that if, as long as the child has a social security number, you are eligible for the child tax credit. The IRS and groups that help low-income families are working to get that word out, first pointing to IRS.gov. Those families that traditionally have not filed a tax form can just go online, enter their information. It's just basic information, who you are, where you live, how old are your children, and where can the money be sent to. If Internet access is a hurdle, families can seek a group offering free summer tax help, like Cash Campaign of Maryland in and around Baltimore. If there's someone that's helping folks to do your taxes for free in your area, that's the ideal place to go.
the other thing is, you know, working with with neighbors, friends, trusted advisors that might be able to help you to navigate. Joseph Lightman Santa Cruz of Capital Area Asset Builders, which offers financial programs and education for low and moderate income black and brown families in the Washington, D.C. area, also advises preparing for future payments. Open an account with either a credit union or a bank. Let's not waste your money because you might be unbanked or underbanked. Let's make sure that the money gets directly deposited into your account. Child tax credit payments are scheduled around the 15th of each month through the end of 2021. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. The San Pasquale Academy will remain open through the end of June 2022. The County Board of Supervisors unanimously approved extending the Academy's contract. Located in Escondido, it's a residential educational campus designed specifically for foster youth. It was slated to close in October because of declining enrollment. A major milestone today in the construction of Aztec Stadium in Mission Valley. KPBS reporter John Carroll was there for the ceremonial topping out ceremony. Under a hot July sun, work moved ahead on Aztec Stadium in Mission Valley Wednesday afternoon, while a big ceremony played out on what will be known as Basher Field. San Diego State President Adela De La Torre. What an amazing accomplishment we have here. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria getting in some civic boosterism. The entire Mission Valley expansion of SDSU's campus, that's big, it's bold, it's exciting. It's the kind of stuff that the eighth largest city in the country should be doing. After the speeches, the big event, the raising of a steel beam laden with signatures from everybody who wanted to sign, an American flag and a tree on top. The tree, an ancient symbol of good luck in construction. San Diego State's school song played as the beam rose. We'll speed things up so you can see its entire journey to the top. Looking around this unfinished stadium, one could be forgiven for being skeptical that it's going to be open and ready by September 3rd of next year, but San Diego State President Adela De La Torre isn't only confident of that, she's sure of it. I'm willing to bet on it. That's how much I'm willing to say I am confident about it. It's just everything has happened. The stars have aligned. With all the excitement about the new stadium, it's easy to forget there's much more to this project. The site will also be home to a new river park, a research and innovation district, 4,000 new homes, and thousands of SDSU students, which leads to a pretty obvious question. Traffic in Mission Valley is already horrible. So how will the Valley's strained transportation network handle all those extra people? We don't want a bunch of housing with a lot of degradation in our quality of life. The way you prevent that is with thoughtful infrastructure investment. The regional transportation plan I hope we'll adopt this year will be exactly that. September 3rd, 2022. That's the date the stadium is set to open. The Aztec football team will take on the University of Arizona and the game is already sold out. John Carroll, KPBS News. The White House is hoping to get a boost from pop star Olivia Rodrigo, all in hopes of encouraging young people to get that crucial shot in the arm. It's important to have conversations with friends and family members, encouraging all communities to get vaccinated and actually get to a vaccination site, which you can do more easily than ever before. The 18-year-old actress and singer, who is from Temecula, by the way, visited the White House today to meet with the president and Dr. Anthony Fauci. Rodrigo will also be recording videos and answering questions. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell is testifying on inflation. As prices for nearly cl everything climb higher, some lawmakers are concerned the Fed isn't doing enough to help the economy recover from the pandemic. Mandy Gaither has a look at the testimony and how Powell is addressing criticism. In the hot seat, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell addressing surging inflation before the House Financial Services Committee, saying he expects inflation to stay hot in the coming months before cooling off. Inflation has increased notably and will likely remain elevated in coming months before moderating. Wednesday's testimony comes amid growing concerns that out-of-control inflation could jeopardize the current health of the economy as it roars back from COVID-19 shutdowns. Let's be clear. 
Inflation is a tax hike on everyday consumers and small businesses. Inflation is accelerating at the fastest pace in 13 years. Powell addressing lawmakers' concerns, saying inflation metrics are being exaggerated by the fact that prices completely crashed last spring when the pandemic erupted. He says rapid price hikes are temporary and will partially reverse as the bottlenecks ease in the coming months. He also promised the Fed is ready to act if necessary if they notice signs that inflation expectations are persistently above the central bank's goals, but said the economy is a ways off from where it needs to be for the central bank to change its current policy. However, Powell did say Fed officials are discussing whether it should scale back its asset purchases, saying they're looking at several metrics to make those decisions. It really is a very broad range of things, including wages, unemployment, level of employment, participation, all those things. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. And we have an update on our top story. San Diego County just reported another 275 coronavirus cases and four deaths. As case numbers rise again, public health officials say vaccine hesitancy is a concern. A recent county survey found one in five adults surveyed says they have no intention of getting vaccinated over concerns about side effects and that the development process was rushed. Yesterday, the County Board of Supervisors approved a $24 million grant to address disparities and increase vaccine access. You can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Maya Trabulsi. Have a great evening. Major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. by viewers like you. Thank you.